Welcome to our lecture online and in this example we're going to find the magnetic field inside and outside a conductor but in this case the conductor has variable current density notice that it increases as the radius increases it should be zero at the very center and maximum kr squared at the very edge now the radius of the of the conductor is r and of course with the current will be flowing from bottom to top we need to find the magnetic field inside and outside the conductor so what we're going to do, we're going to employ Ampere's law. We're going to pick an arbitrary point. Let's say we want to find the magnetic field at this location right there. So we draw a complete circle around the center of the conductor. And at that point, we realize by using the right-hand rule that the current goes up like this, and the magnetic field will curl around like that. That means at this location, the magnetic field will be in this direction. And notice and also a very small line segment DL will also be in the same direction at that very same location, DL like that. That means that the B field, the magnetic field, and the direction of that loop will be the same direction all the way around the loop. Using Ampere's law, we can write that the complete line integral in a closed loop of B dot DL has to equal mu sub naught times I enclosed. Now we'll figure out how we to find the I enclosed later, but right now we're just concentrating on this part of the equation. Remember that B dot DL, it's a dot product, B dot DL is equal to the magnitude of B times the magnitude of DL times the cosine of the angle between them. In this particular case though, you notice that everywhere along the loop, the magnetic field and the line segment will be pointing in the same direction, which means the angle is zero. That means this is equal to B times the L times the cosine of zero degrees and of course the cosine of zero is equal to one so we can write that product simply as B times the L so in this case we can write this as the integral of B times the L which is equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed which means B times the L is simply the magnitude of B times the length of the path which is 2 pi R because the radius to that pad, let's just call it r, an arbitrary distance r, and that would be equal to mu, mu sub naught times i enclosed. Now we have to find an equation to describe i enclosed. The way we do that, we go back to the definition of current density. By definition, the current density is equal to the total current divided by the area. Of course, in this case, that cannot be a constant because it varies. So what we can do is that we can take a small little region inside this loop right there so a small little region like this and imagine this to be a hollow cylinder all the way through the conductor and we're trying to find the current in that small little segment so we can say well that's going to be di and the small amount of di that is inside this remember this goes all the way like that Like so. so the current in that portion right there is going to be equal to the current density J times the area, the cross-sectional area of that, that would be a small amount of dA. So that would be the current inside that little loop. And then of course we integrate that from R equals zero to R equal to the edge of that, which would be small r, and that gives us all the current inside here. So dA, well, we, J is of course equal to kR squared, so di is equal to kr squared. Oh, that's a terrible looking r. Whoop. Let me get a better eraser right here. So kr squared times dA. Now dA would be simply the circumference times the thickness, which is times 2 pi r times dr. And so di can then be simplified to be kr uh, cubed times 2 pi times dr. And that would be the current inside. So to find the total current inside, I total, I total, that's equal to the integral of all the di's, and we're going to integrate from 0 to r, and so that would be I total is equal to, take the 2 pi and k outside integral sign, 2 pi k, times the integral of r cubed dr from 0 to r. So the total, I total, is equal to 2 pi k times r to the fourth divided by four, evaluated from zero to r. Of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get zero. Plug in the upper limit, you simply get two divided by four, so we get i total is equal to, or I should say not total, it'd be i enclosed, so I don't confuse anybody. So let's call closed. it enclosed. 
because really what we want is only the current inside this sigma right here, not the total current of the whole conductor. So that's going to be equal to pi times k times r to the fourth divided by 2. And that will then go in there. So then we'll take pi times k times r to the fourth all divided by 2. Okay, now we can simplify both sides of the equation. Notice they both have a pi on both sides of the equation. We have an r here that becomes r to the third power, and these two come down here. So the magnetic field that would be inside is equal to mu sub naught times k times r cubed, all divided by 2. And that would be the strength of the magnetic field inside the conductor at a distance r away from the center. Okay. What would be the magnetic field outside the conductor? Well, in that case, what we do, so this is inside, we use the same equation, the integral all the way around the loop, b dot dl, must equal mu sub naught times i enclosed. And we know that this is going to be equal to the strength of the b field times 2 pi. Now, of course, in this case, we're going to have a loop all the way around like this. Our radius out to there would simply be r, and of course it still would be 2 pi r, but in this case we realize that r is bigger than the radius of the conductor, so this 2 pi r is equal to mu sub naught times i enclosed. So now we need to find the current enclosed in the entire conductor, so therefore we use the very same principle, but instead of finding the limit to go from 0 to small r is going to be from 0 to big R, big R representing the total radius of that conductor. So in this case, this R would now become big R, this R becomes big R, this R becomes big R, and this R becomes big R. So this becomes, instead of that, I enclosed is going to be pi k big R to the fourth power divided by 2. And so now we plug that in here. Instead of I enclosed, we're going to have pi k r to the fourth over four, over two. So pi k big R to the fourth divided by two. And then you realize that this r does not cancel out with that r because it's not the same thing. The small r is out to the line integral, the, the line that we use in the line integral. Big R is simply the radius of the conductor. All right, so simplifying this, it becomes the strength of magnetic field is going to be equal to, well, the pi's do cancel out, so it's going to be k mu sub naught times k times r to the fourth divided by, the two comes down here, that'd be four times small r. And that would be the strength of the magnetic field outside. Now, one way to make sure that we figure this out correctly, what we can do is we can go to the limit. We can take the inside solution and bring it all the way out when r becomes equal to r. We take the outside solution and let r go down to r, and then we should get the same answer. Okay, so at r equals to r, what does this become? Well, this becomes the B field is going to be equal to mu sub naught times k times big R cubed over 2, and here, at r equals to r, we get the B field is equal to mu sub naught k times uh, big R to the fourth divided by 4 times, and that the small r would now become big R. And notice, oh, yes, yes, I see that. I forgot to bring the 2 over here. 2 times 2, that becomes 4. That becomes 4. Hey, that's why we checked, right? So now we can see that I made a mistake there. I forgot to multiply this 2 times this 2 to get a 4 there. And then when we come over here, what we can say is that this, then this r cancel out that r, so this is equal to mu sub naught k times r cubed divided by 4. And notice that this is the same as that, which means the two answers, when they converge to the boundary or the edge of the conductor, we get the same result. So therefore, we're pretty confident now that they are correct. And notice, by doing that, I realized that I've forgotten to multiply this 2 times this 2 to make that in 4, and that's why we did that. That's how you find the magnetic field inside and outside a conductor if the current density is not a constant.